Hey guys, in this video, we are taking a look at this microphone. This is the Fafine K658 USB dynamic microphone. I was sent it by Fafine for review. Uh, they reached out to me the other week asking if I wanted to re um, review one of their USB condenser microphones. And I said, well, I'm, I'm, I don't really have time to do another, another condenser mic review. But if you had something that compares with one of my favorite microphones, the SM7B, but at a lower price range, I'd happily review that. It's hard for me to recommend the SM7B because of how expensive it is, and then you have to buy the preamp as well. So if a fine had something that could compete at a lower price, I'd love to review it. And they said, we absolutely do have something, and they sent me this. So uh, what I'm gonna do in this video is do a re review of the specs, uh, look, look over the microphone a little bit, and then compare it with the SM7B, just so you see how it compares sound-wise. Uh, on the website, this microphone sells for $119.99 USD. Uh, for comparison, the Shure SM7B is like four or $500 Canadian. And then you have to buy the uh, USB preamp as well, and the XLR cable, etc. This microphone is about the same price as an entry-level XLR preamp. So there's a lot of value here, potentially. Uh, the specs say it's a 16-bit, 48 kilohertz microphone, so 16-bit depth, uh, 48 samples, uh, 48,000 samples a second. Um, that's, that's you know, standard for consumer USB mics. It's a little low for a professional mic. Uh, frequency response, 70 to 15 kilohertz. Signal to noise ratio, 70 dBA. Equivalent noise, negative 77 dB. There's no XLR output. Uh, there are some alternatives to the Shure SM7B that have USB and XLR output uh, that are also less money than the Shure SM7B, but they are still also more expensive than this guy at 119. So this is uh, definitely a more of the value-oriented line. Um, the output is USB-C. So that's good to see. And it connects to the computer via the type A. So the more classical connection, if you have a MacBook Air, like a modern one, you might need an adapter. Uh, but for most desktops, uh, this is perfect in my opinion. Uh, there is a volume control. I'm gonna spin it around. So we have a volume control here and that tends to work pretty well. Uh, there's lots and lots of uh, fine tuning available there. There are buttons on the microphone. So there's a button on the bottom side or top side, whatever you want, that turns on the LED lights. And there is another touch button on the actual volume control for muting. So red and green. The LEDs seem to be embedded into the microphone itself and pointing backwards. So it's reflecting off the shock mount that's included. And there's rubber bands holding the microphone and the shock mount together came with a shock mount, which is great. It also came with a little tripod stand, right? Um, it's great to get you started, but you're definitely gonna wanna move away from this probably as soon as you can. I, I lost two of the little rubber legs that came with it within a matter of minutes uh, somewhere in my room. So it, yeah, it's perfectly adequate. The rubber legs do help, but you, you are, probably going to want to move to a different microphone stand, but everything you need is included, including the cable. I'm currently connecting the Shure SM7B to a USB preamp, a USB Pre 2 a sound devices preamp. Um, it is uh, like a thousand dollars Canadian or so. So hopefully I'm giving things the best chances here. I'll be uh, comparing the voice of these microphones. 
now. Um, and I'll, I'll just switch back between the two as I continue talking. Um, I was sent the manual in the box as well. Uh, it's a rather comprehensive manual telling you how to install it for Mac and PC, how to set up Audacity. Uh, tells you also how to uh, speak into the microphone and how to connect all the parts. It came in a, uh, a box, right? Nothing special, no carry case, but the, the packaging was quite nice nonetheless to open. Uh, it did come with a mic stand adapter, so if you have one of those smaller um, screw-on and mic stands, it will fit onto that, I'd imagine, as well. Um, yeah. Uh, when I look at the pickup in my recording software, I had the microphone on the maximum gain setting, and it's peaking at around uh, around negative 10 peaking. So it, it, it's, it seems pretty well dialed in for voice up close. It's, it's going to be hard to clip. So on the back of the SM7B, we do have these uh, frequency response switches. And on the back of the K658, we have instead a headphone jack for USB audio feedback. So the microphone acts as a USB sound card that you can send audio to. Uh, and it also has the USB-C output port. If we compare the foam windscreens of the microphones, the Shure SM7B has a removable windscreen. Uh, so you can replace it with a larger one or if it gets damaged, replace it that way. On the K658, the windscreen just unscrews and there's three screws holding down the capsule. Comparing the mounts for these two microphones, we have a, a plastic and rubber band a shock mount for for the, for the Fafine K658. Pretty pretty standard. If you want to change the microphone's uh, position, you, you use the shock mount uh, to do that. Uh, you want to speak into the microphone directly in. So you want to speak into the front with this microphone, not from the side like you might with a condenser. Uh, yeah, um, the LED lights come out the back of the microphone and reflect off the shock mount. Um, so that's a neat effect. Uh, on camera you might see the LED lights flicker a bit, but um, it depends on your camera settings I suppose. The SM7B goes with a very uh, simple design in, in my mind. Uh, we have a little bit of swivel head and the XLR cable comes out the bottom as like an integrated one unit with the mount and, and all that. And that keeps the XLR cable kind of out of the way. With the Fafine, the XLR, the USB-C cable comes out the back. And it might be more in the way, uh, depending on how you have it set up. If you have it on a boom arm, it, it, you'll have to um, bring it in and, and wrap it around. Uh, not a big deal, really. So I have the two microphones here set up uh, equal distance away from my, my mouth, so just a few inches. They're both at maximum gain, so the Fafine is at maximum, and the uh, sound device's USB Premix 2 is at full gain. Uh, the Shure is louder in this case. I do see it peaking higher, so it's peaking closer to negative 6, and the fine speaking closer to negative 12 uh, ish. So I'd imagine the fine is gaining around 60 ish dB. And uh, because there's different EQs on, on how these microphones might sound, uh, to judge the noise floor, I'm going to actually play some brown noise, hold it uh, a few feet away from the microphone use that as a normalizing base, and then uh, compare the noise floor of the two microphones that way.
So one final test. I'll just knock on the desk to test the shock absorption. And that's kind of the end of the review, guys. I'm not going to offer too much, uh, too much of an opinion on the microphone. I'll, I'll, you, know, you can judge for yourself on what you think it sounds like and whether it meets your needs or not. Uh, I am interested in microphones, and so I thought this was worth reviewing considering the price point and the fact it's a front address dynamic that appeals to me quite a bit. It has the headphone out. It has a USB-C. It has built-in shock mount, comes with a stand. Um, it has the mute button, volume control built in. So it's a feature rich microphone at a, a competitive price point of 119 US. I, you know, to me, that was worth the review. Um, I'll probably have other microphones in the future coming to review um, just because I enjoy doing it. So anyways, thank you for watching and take care, guys.